Hi and welcome to another video on the British Military Sabre. Uh, this lesson is going to be looking at your distance or your measure, and that is the distance between you and your opponent. And it's um, judged in terms of striking distance. So it's going to depend on um, how tall you are, how much reach you've got, and how long your sword is. Um, and there are a few ways we've got to measure distance. Uh, and and when, it, when we say measure, we mean the distance that you want to predict in the fight to actually stand in, in your guard posture. The first thing is, you don't want to be in a distance where you can strike your opponent without actually moving your feet. That's too close. You will get to that point in a fight, but not in your stance or guard position. And that would be this distance here. Because at this distance, we can both just reach and strike each other without any footwork at all. You don't want that. That's very dangerous for both of you. So, your basic distance, um, your first measure, your first way of measuring it, is typical for most sword-based arts, actually, um, that we study. And that is your lunge distance. And that means, at our lunge distance, if I reach out with my body, I can't actually strike him, but if I lunge, I can. Okay? So that's your first distance, is you have to lunge to be able to hit your opponent. Um, and that's kind of a typical measure that you see within, say, rapier and saber, and quite a few other systems as well. Um, so if you're out of that distance, you're out of distance, out of measure. If you're in lunging distance, it's standard. So distance, that's good. No closer than that. There are two other ways that Roe have mentioned of judging your distance, because that one that I've just shown you is dependent on you as the attacker aligning to your opponent in order to strike them. But you tend to find the person with more reach or a longer weapon tends to dominate that distance, um, and you don't want to say have your opponent with a longer weapon or longer reach, and you adjust to that distance because then they can hit you at a shorter distance um, without moving their feet. So you need, still need to be at a lunge distance for them, uh, which puts you at a disadvantage to some, to some degree as well but it's really, really important from a defense perspective that you are not within that short measure of your opponent. Um, and the way that's done in Roeth is he says that in your guard posture, your opponent shouldn't be able to cut your rear leg. And that's important because our standard, um, from the footwork video, our standard way of defending the lead leg is to just move it back in line. So that's how we protect the lead leg. If you can cut your back leg in your guard posture, you're too close. And you'll see what I mean by that is if Mike goes to my lead leg, and we're quite close now, and I step back, I'm just about okay, and that would be fine. But if I'm a little bit closer, and he cuts, and takes the back leg, you are there for too close. And of course, you're going to have to test this with different people, but you need to get to the point where you can judge it yourself in the fight um, with, your, with different opponents. And it's really good because it's actually judging your, your distance, your measure, defensively because it ensures that your footwork, your posture, your distance is always set right to, to defend against a range of different opponents, not just your striking distance. And lastly, there's a third method, which is a really simple, quick uh, one that Roeth mentions of just how to quickly judge your distance, and that is if you stand in guard and both of you extend your swords, you should just about be able to touch the bowl um, or the cross guard of the opponent's sword, and that should be your distance, and that's Again, a very quick and simple system of being able to judge your distance. So there's three ways to measure it. Um, and that's all. It's all on distance work for now. Thank you for watching.